Yo, what's up, everybody? I am Thomas, Dope Ziola, whatever you want to call me. I am here with Marty O'Neill. What's up, folks? What's up, guys? Uh, This is the Dope As Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, problems, drugs, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today, we have a very, well, two very special guests, host of Hawk versus Wolf. This is Jason Ellis and Tony Hawk. How you guys doing? Hello, hello. Hey. What's What's up? up? Hey. Going to talk about drugs, Tony? That's the one thing you picked out of all those subjects. (laughs) I knew it. Yeah, because that's the one that doesn't fit. <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, ask him. Yeah, oh, that, 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 that's one thing I even ask. I'm like, I don't want to smoke these joints. Let me ask him first. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was polite of you. I just don't want to ruin someone's day. Like yeah, I don't want to ruin his day either. Uh, do, what you, do what you want. Man. Then let's care. do it. Well, whenever you, you want, you, you, I, let I, me you know. I'm ready. I grew up in the world of skateboarding. I am quite used to people smoking weed around me. It's all right. Oh. Yeah, but I it also I look as a guy that's always smoked the weed and Tony has not. I've always been um back of the bus. I, yeah, I just feel like <laughs> I feel like he is really easy going, but you know you can get somebody contact high and All if day. I if he's high and he didn't want to be and it was my fault, I even if he's like, "Ah, relax, I'm fine." I feel like a fucking idiot cuz I'm time. like, "Dude, I don't like to I've got a co-host on my other show, the Jason L show, and one of the co-hosts is the touchiest lightweight weed person ever. At one point he told me, because I used to smoke weed in the studio, he's like, I can't do it, dude. You give me contact high. And I was like, okay, fair enough. I'll get a vape pen. And then every now and then he's like, I'm getting contact high from the vape pen. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to fucking disagree. I don't even know if that's possible. But oh, I don't know. So that that's always kind of the way he is. I just, ex- I assume that all potheads are that all people that don't smoke weed are like him and that if you smoke weed in front of them it, it's offensive so i i don't do it my thing is my it's more like oh here's my beer drink my beer it's the same thing it's like i don't want to be a part of it i'll just walk around there and smoke a joint that's you the, don't drink no i'm saying like if someone doesn't drink and you're like drink this it's the same thing as smoking a joint in their face it's like they don't want to be a part of that yeah, yeah i just yeah, feel at least bad. walk off a little bit that's why i just feel bad so yeah. that's why i like to ask before <laughs> or okay. kids too yeah, I don't smoke around kids or old hey, people. Kids show up, I fucking dust that thing straight away. And if my to. friends keep going, I'm like, hey, put it out. Get that out now. Mm-hmm. Kids and old people, I don't bump offensive music around either. I fucking hate it. Man, I wish I could say the same. My kid listens to the most offensive music <laughs> ever. I don't even know what it is, but it is fucking offensive. <laughs> How old's your kids? 13. I took him to the barracks the other day for my son's birthday, and he had a friend. And they're in the back and they're like, can we play music, Dad? I'm like, yeah, of course. Gave him my phone. You know, have at it. And then it's just motherfucking N-bomb fucking suck my dick, pussy. I'm like, and then I look I look in the mirror and look back and they know the words. Oh, for sure. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, dude, you did not just say, can you guys not say that in the <laughs> back or even look like you know what it is? I was Let's- embarrassed to listen to shit like that in front of my parents. They don't have that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a different dad. He's like, dad's a maniac. He'll appreciate that I know this words, yeah. even though I, I did not. I just like, whatever. It's kids. They all, I yeah. love how you can be shocked. I, <laughs> what? What oh, the, I've known him for a long time. Person. When did you guys meet? <laughs> I, don't know, like, I met him before he met me. So I met him in Australia because he came to Australia to do a demo. And he is Tony Hawk. And I'm uh, sponsored by the skate shop that um, had him there. So I found out that the Bones Brigade would come into the skate shop before the demo. So I was in the skate shop, Tony, Lance. Uh, Steve Statham? Nah, no, nah, that was, this is later. I didn't see you until the oh. 90s, I think. Maybe late 80s, but McGill, I think. But they were in the shop and they just looked around like, yeah. oh, cool shirts, cool board. And I'm just standing in the corner going, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> And then they left, and I was like, did you guys know who that is? And one dude said no, and I just flipped out on him. I'm like, that's, I was that's like, how did you up. fucking not know who Tony Hawk is, you idiot? Get this guy out of the shop. And I was freaking out. And then I met him in the contest, but I didn't want – I have video of it. We, we've posted it before. Oh, right? yeah, it's funny. His, his dad was – so he he got – how was it? Your dad just paid for an entry yeah, fee. Yeah, 25 bucks. Yeah, 25 bucks, and, bucks, and then – And it was a pro contest. They put him in the last heat, the, with which them. was with me and Christian the finals. Asoy. 
No, 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 last, no, no. For qualifying, last qualifying yeah. heat. Got gotcha. you. Because there's there's five heats or something, maybe yeah. six back then. But um, it was me, Christian Osoy. Yeah, everybody. Sergi, yeah. just all the bangers. Sergi and, and, and so I, and me. His, and I was like, ah. his dad's filming him, and he's. And I I don't remember because I was too focused on trying to skate, but but he's looking at his dad like. Yeah, are you getting this? Yeah, are you he's getting- standing right next to me, and then he looks my way, and I'm like. <laughs> but I don't want to get eye contact. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, so that was that was like 88, 89. Yeah. Um, oh, you guys were just starting out. No, well, not just I, starting I, out. I was. He he was already fairly super efficient. Fairly new, I would say, right? Um, I was in the sort of swing of my first go around of pro skating, <laughs> which was the 80s. Uh, first swing i love when you yeah. say it like that i mean it was i, I i've kind of lived through two cycles or three cycles of popularity yeah, so um so i it, we we thought we were living you know we were living large yeah. skating was big as far as we knew we yeah. were traveling the world i was going to australia yeah um it was packed you know everybody yeah. ever biggest crowds you've ever seen everybody yeah. was freaking out and then uh around 91 92 everything just fell off for skating. For, for skating, mostly our type of skating, yeah. which was more vert based. That's right, when I turned pro too. Yeah, but also all the parks were closing. So, you know, skating survived and went through a revolution of street skating and tricks and things like that. But it was pretty underground because a lot of people that say like, well, your, your career, it might have been your career that died then, but skating didn't die. I was like, yeah, but skating was was not cool was it was very difficult to make a living even to you're the best street skater at the time you know what i mean yeah of course um but it went through a, a whole a whole evolution and then came back like i'd say like 97 98 well that's when i was oh, yeah. going hard like i was telling you before we started that yeah. my mom gave me she she has a thrasher subscription since like 91 when i was a baby and she started just giving them to me and that's when i was like look at these fucking dudes Jumping down rails, <laughs> yeah. And I was, there was me on my curb. Remember, I told you my little try to do little board slides and fifty fifties, little fat kid. I I tried my best, man. I really did try my best. Did you get hurt all the time? I just I was telling you before yeah. we started, I was done. Like the last time I I played, I was at Chenoweth, smacked the back of my head or my tailbone. I'm done. Like there, it's only so. Much. And I just started doing drugs as a. I'm. It's really what happened. Nice. The drugs took over, man. I started me selling, too. Selling drugs. <laughs> He, but he he managed to skate through it. I, yeah, that saved me. Oh, all my friends. Because there kept was doing many it. times there where I was like, I'll just do more blow, and I was like, if I do more blow, I'll I die. won't skate. So this has to end. So well, good, saved, saved, saved your couple. life. Yeah, many times, many times. Yeah, no, I have, I have friends that kept going, and obviously everyone's skating, and we're all drunk. I'm like, oh, let me try again, but I never got back on, man, until. I ate shit in front of Jerron. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the it was last legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, he recently. Jerron Wilson on here, and, and uh, he was, I was in the doing a little demo for him. Oh. I ate shit. Yeah. I thought it broke my tailbone. Got on video? Well, then it's a win win. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is fun. I just. I just you can't play that goofy? Damn it. He's Getting up up. and it pans over and it comes back and it's on the ground. Well, I remember it and it hurt. <laughs> and then I had what? Fabian Alomar on and Fabian's wild as fuck. We were supposed to go skating. Yep. And then uh, I was watching Conor McGregor break his leg. I went, oh, you know what? I don't think I want to go skating with him. That was the night before, right? Before I was supposed to go with him. Like, hey, Fabian, I'm good. I'm too heavy, bro. Let me lose some fucking weight and then we'll go fucking skating. <laughs> um, so you guys met a, a fucking while ago. You guys have been... I mean, I guess friends for a long time. Are you doing oh, this? No. Okay. okay. Were you smoking weed your whole skate career? Yeah. Nice. I don't know if it's a gift or a curse. To me, it's just more about monotony and pain. You know, if I smoke weed, I'm in less pain. If I smoke weed, I can get in. It's harder to get in the zone, but once I get in the zone, it's hard to get out. Like once I'm high and sweating and focused. Mm-hmm. I can, you know, I mean, it's different for everybody. But for me, I felt like some of the hardest tricks I ever made I was high. Sorry, Shit. is that true? Yeah, like I, at Plan B, all those tricks that took me a long time to do, like I would try it for a couple of hours and and not make it, and then go smoke weed. And I had those little Colin and I had those little mini bikes, so I would just do laps around the parking lot high, and then clear my head and go in there and take me a little bit to warm up because now I'm super high. But then I would just wow. work. I'm not leaving until That's I make it. Is it? That's impressive. I think yeah. so. All right. 
I think I uh, one I was skating to Mar one time. Everyone would just smoke weed in the parking lot. Don't not everyone, but there was a, there was a pretty hardcore crew. And I went out there and I was like, "Yeah, come on, I'll smoke with you guys." And then I went and skated and hung up on every trick. Like every time I tried to do an error, I'd hang up and I was like, "This is not for me." Getting hurt oh, doesn't no. work. Like hanging up, slamming. I could feel it coming. Like I could, you know, I was like, "Why can't I?" It, it, you know, hanging up. Not not bad because I could sense that I was there was a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you're that high I up. Knew, it's not for me. No weed. Yeah, I mean, it was it was in that moment very much so. I was like, it d- doesn't help my skating, and it doesn't. And and I think that was probably a turning point because when I would see my peers do it, especially other pros, I just be like, I if that's gonna wreck my skating, yeah. and I am so hyper focused on my skating. And and like the events that we'd go to, the the practice sessions, the the event, the the competitions, I just be like, no, I'm not doing any of that stuff because I see that some people it seems okay for a lot of people, they don't come back, yeah, mm-hmm. or they get worse, and that was a dread for me. Yeah, he was a great ambassador because he was one of the few that was sober and but not preachy sober, just just sober. Just I'm like, how is he that good? What does he do? He doesn't smoke weed. Then right off the bat, He's yeah. The I was like, interesting. I wonder if I could do that uh, or any uh, any any of the other varieties yeah, of which, uh, intoxicants you were taking. Right, and when you hang out with the guys that do do it, it's super apparent that they're not that good the next day. <laughs> yeah, because they were up with me until four in the morning doing rails. Like it's yeah. not gonna. And you'd see them. Not I mean, just like, grinding rails. I was always I was always oh, yeah, on in the early practice sessions usually. Because I wanted to get there and, and get going, and I would I would purposely be in those practice sessions because I knew none of those guys were going to show up. Oh what they wouldn't too early. They too early, and then they would all try to squeeze into the later practice sessions and just cause chaos yeah. in the and organization. You knew not event. to be there. Oh yeah, I was like I already I skated at nine a.m. I'm done. See like I'm mean? ready. Valedictorian. That's over just here, man. one of the <laughs> many things that you have to do. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. I think I mean that's what I. There's one friend of our whole drug addict group that did not do drugs until his homework was done, and he is a fucking doctor now. <laughs> until his oh. homework was done. Then he raged. Yes, every day. <laughs> that doesn't count as a sober one, just so you know. No, I'm saying he's the good one. Like, at okay. least you did You your guys homework. were like, fuck it, I'm not even working. Let's he just had, get He high. had his priorities straight. Right. That's what he said. Oh, the only one. Yeah. But he's All the right. only one that's a doctor. And Thomas grew up in the meth capital of America yeah, capital to of qualify America. that. So a lot of my friends <laughs> live outside, like, straight out addict type shit. But he's the only one that made it, like, uh. good. So it's good. I mean, I understand that person, that type of personality. Yeah. Um, so my first question after this, <laughs> with this intro is a uh, Hawk versus Wolf. How did you guys, I mean, you know each other. Obviously, you guys doing the same sport. What made you come together and go? Because I saw you had a show on Sirius yeah, for a years. long time. Yeah, but do you know how I got that show? No. A long time ago, before that show, I was, 2004. I, I, in 2004, thank you. I was asked by a guy named Tony Hawk if I wanted to be a co-host on his show on Sirius XM. That's so, what happened. And then he told Sirius XM, I think Jason could actually be pretty big in radio. So they gave me a DJ gig as well as being a, a co-host on his show. And the DJ spot got really big really fast to the point where those fans were calling his show... And they were trying to do a bit of my show on his show. And this is back when Tony was way more uh, for the younger generation. Like it was, people would call and be like, how do you do a kick flip? And, he, and he'd tell them, you know? And then if people would ask me like, hey man, like, you know, I got a fucking mean pussy fart recorded. You want to see it? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> that was not- that was a tame, that was a tame request. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of stuff we would get. It was super inappropriate. On the I'm- radio? Yeah, what's well, on oh, Sirius XM? You can say right. that stuff, but, but, but I would see the calls and be like, oh, oh. I don't know, that call looks like <laughs> all right. Let's go for it. Right. And I could see that was happening, and 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 then I was like, look, I think I should just try to make my own show. And Tony has always been, uh, uh, uh like such a big help to me, like in, in my skateboard career, radio, pod, now pod, podcasting, everything. He always helps me. So it was like, can Jason be bigger? Uh, and does he have a real shot at making it? I believe he does. So who cares about my show? You go do your thing, dude. So there was never any good harsh. That's the end. way it works, though, when yeah. shit functions right. So then we did that for many years. He still did his show. I did my show. My show got bigger and bigger. And at one point, it was 
doing really well. And then something happened. They got some more people or somebody got, someone else became in charge. And then we were not as popular as we once were. And they let him go for just disrespecting him for, I don't know how I, long I, he is, right? Well, not, I, la- I left. Right. Be, I, but because they, they were just like, we don't, they're not putting a show um, on. That was it Sunday or something? They were yeah, doing? my shows were usually Thursday afternoon. One time. Had, yeah. And then, uh, and then they're like, oh, we put it on Sunday at two or something. I, without, I didn't even know. And, I was just a, and this is before they had streaming mm-hmm. where you right. could go back and watch listen to shows right, this was so like live it. shows yeah. so yeah you missed it and then yeah. and then i just said well that sucks like i got seth rogan on the show yeah and he was pulling crazy uh, you guests. know I, I got Pee Wee herman and and like paul rubens i always talk about paul yeah, you got everybody i got every, and then i was like you guys aren't even promoting it or yeah. ca- and, and, and you didn't even tell the fans you moved the time slot it's crazy yeah exactly and so and so i just said like i i love this but you're not, I, I'm not getting the support. And, yeah. and every time they would renew the contract, which is whatever, I wasn't getting a ton of money anyway, but they would never offer more. It was always like maybe a little less. Wow. But do less and maybe maybe less shows. And then finally I was just like, I, I can feel what's happening. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm out. Yeah. And so I willingly left. I don't have hard feelings. Like Scott Greenstein got me there. I love Scott and some of the dudes, the director, like the music directors and stuff. We had a good run, but then it was time to move on because I was just like, I, there's no way that... The stuff that I'm doing, especially with the guests I was getting, it, it, that can't just be discounted. No. Yeah. Right? And you no, can't just overlook it. Every year. Yeah. And so then he started his own thing, podcasting. Yeah. Uh, well, he, then, then I, got, I got, I didn't, yeah, I didn't leave. I got let go. <laughs> I could, oh, I don't shit. mind. Yeah. There was like a, a budget thing. And I was one of those people up there with Jenny McCarthy that was making, I was making a lot of money. That was the other thing. This turned into a really a mate for me, uneducated moron. <laughs> Holy shit! I was, I never would have imagined that my paycheck would look like that every year, and so I'm very grateful for it. But then out of nowhere, it was just like, "Hey, we don't have it," and I'm like, "Wait, what? I thought we were doing a 15 year celebration, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to call in. I'm gone." And it's like, I know it's really bad, and we don't, you know, I mean, we'll try to make it up for it to you or whatever, and you know they. I've got real friends there, but in the end, it's a business, it's corporate, and uh, when it comes down to it, they, they'll cut your head off without without batting an eye. So Ugh. that happened, and I freak out, panic mode, get a podcast. What's everybody doing in podcasting? Holy shit, is this going to work still? And then Tony called me and said, do you want to do a podcast with me? And I was like, fuck yeah, I do. That sounds awesome. And then... It was weird because when we started it, it's just different. What we used to do is nowhere near as good as what we do now. Something happened maybe because of the years of us hanging out. It's just, it's always, a st- if we don't have a guest, I think the show's better yeah. without the guest. Because me and him just start talking about stuff yeah. that that I-, I can tell everybody's freaking out about. It. We, we trigger th- memories and they're usually, if you cared about skateboarding at all in your life, you're like, whoa, because I feel like, he says stuff where I'm like now a 12 year old where I go, what? No way. In 19, what? That what? Shit. You know, and it's yeah. super exciting. I just, to went over the, I just went over the Lance Mountain episode and there's a lot of that. It's just, pretty good. Yeah. Like when he invents the fucking eggplant yeah, and yeah. I realize <laughs> that's it. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, and I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause I, yeah. it's just a trick that means so much to me and he's just so blase. Oh, yeah, I, I might have invented it. I'm like, if I invented that, I would have it tattooed on my chest with like double fingers. Like, <laughs> Fuck you guys. Fucking inventor of the eggplant. Like changing the game. I think, I think that the reason it got better too is that you became a better broadcaster, obviously. You did. And, but, but I, well, I did through doing those interviews. Yeah. But also just less reserved because I was always like, I didn't want to defend anyone. I didn't want to really get into any weeds of stories and stuff. Yeah, so, he's different now. It's and, way and also, more. we were trying to get music in it, yeah, which was yeah, weird point. too because yep. everyone had mus- different musical. So we're all making fun of each other's music. Yep. <laughs> Shit. I Roasting hate. each other on the uh, show. Totally. <laughs> yeah. His music is the worst. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Oh, no. No, I, I, it's not only Metallica. Let's put it that way. So it's the worst, (laughs) according to him. I've, I've I've broadened my horizons. horizons. Oh, Oh, Megadeth. I was just saying Megadeth. Megadeth. (laughs) (laughs) Anthrax, Slayer, you know. No, no, no. I like other stuff now. I like soul music these days. I don't really listen to metal at all. Old soul music's great. Yeah. 
It's good to me because I didn't catch it the first time around, so it's all new and fresh to me. I'm excited about ridiculous people that died many years ago. They had it. I didn't know. That's soul and doo-wop. They died a long time ago. I love that shit, man. That's good, man. It's good. It's it's crazy. There's no cussing in that shit. Makes me feel different. Yeah, a little bit. Sometimes there's stuff they say you don't have to cuss to be offensive. That's true. It was a different time back then. Read between the lines. Yeah, there's, uh, man, what's her name? There's a girl. She used to go out with Miles Davis and all these people, and then she had her own, uh, out, like, music for a little bit, and she talks about, you know, treating a man the right way, and it's like, oh damn, you didn't say suck his cock, <laughs> but sounds like it. We got it. Yeah, I got it. You're really gonna, you're really gonna nail that thing when you get it home. Got it. <laughs> So when did you guys start the show? Uh, has it been a year? Uh, I think so, yeah. It might have been a year. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, we don't awful. care about that. It, to me, it's because I got I, start, I started skating again because now I don't work at Sirius. I, I don't have a five-day lockdown. Oh, you stopped skating during the... Fuck, I, sk- I stopped skating for like 20 years, pretty much. Oh, fuck. I skated once. I skated... I think I took like a seven-year break. Did a backside 540, so I skated for three days to do a backside 540. On your 40th birthday. On my 40th yeah. birthday, then stopped again. And then uh, I went and got stem cells in Colombia, and it kind of tightened my knees again. And I was like, I wonder if I could skate. And then I started trying every now and then to go down there, and then I ended up tearing this uh, piece of my knee off the last, I, uh, an MCL, I just ripped it clean off. And then I went in there and got a, 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 a cadaver knee replacement. Dead body so put, yeah, put dead one in there. Wow. Yeah, Cadaver ligament. Yeah, yeah, cada- yeah, not a whole one. It's just a partial one. And then like carbon fiber and all this other cool shit in there, Kevlar. And it fucking makes it work. So now I can skate and fall off and it doesn't hurt. So now I've been skating. So we do a show together and then I skate. And most of the time it's just him and I. I'm skating fucking Tony Hawk's ran with Tony Hawk's my fucking it's part of my job almost like it's the greatest that was that was a big feeling part of, ever. I mean I, I got hurt a couple months ago but um that was a big part of of the beginning of the show too is that people were seeing the progress we would talk about it but we'd also like that was the bulk of our social media for the show was our skate sessions All right um that's since, i mean that what goes hand in hand yeah watch the podcast or listen to the podcast but 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 show. you could but it was fun to see Jason coming back and then he would set a goal and everyone's like right. rooting him on and we'd shoot it and um, hey, it's been emotional yeah like I've done some stuff where I, you know he told me on the I did a kick the bindi and he knew I'd been trying it and I guess he was at a, a family event when I made it but there were several people there that filmed it so people start sending it to him when I made it I really tried not to cry but I, f- I felt emotional enough to cry because I knew how long it had been and I know how old I am and not, I don't feel safe yet on a skateboard. And I was like, I just fucking want to do it so bad one time, you know? And I made it and I was like, it just brought all the, the memories of all the work and all the, all the shit that I've been through to still be here and do that. And then I'm driving home and he texts me. It's just like, no way. (laughs) And I know that, I know that means that he's seen it. You know, and he, and he and then he told me when was the last time he did that, and I said, in the tour that we were on, and he goes, dude, that was twenty years ago. So then, you know, I'm driving yeah. down the freeway, and I'm like, twenty years, and I I could still do it, and it's more fun now than ever because it doesn't matter if you like it or not. I don't care if anybody films it or puts it out there. I wanted it. I want to make it so bad. I just yeah. wanted to have it, and I. It got was it. pretty cool to. The, the, I know on that same subject uh he went it was on a it was on a weekend so there's not usually sessions happening at my ramp on weekends and it just happened that that some people got special permission to go and there's a japanese girl yeah that was there. that's sakura yosuzumi yeah. she she's the gold medalist yeah the little girl no no but, no from the park from oh, the park okay. event at the olympics but i just watched she's a little girl though make no mistake yeah yeah i mean she, but she's in her early 20s or something but oh she's is she say. I think so, yeah. Oh, wow. Or late teens. Anyway, but it's funny just because it, it, this was way before the Olympics. You didn't know who she was. It's just like this random Japanese girl is the one who bared witness to his first gift of Bendy, and she's totally rooting him on. Like, yay! Yeah, like she came over to like 
congratulate me, and I was like, "Who are you? Who thank are you? you? Thank you. <laughs> You're really little. <laughs> are you sure you should be touching me? Like I just felt oh, like who is seen this her lady? Skating vert lately? Yeah, yeah, I know. Dude, she's she's one of the she's she's probably the best female vert skater. It's crazy how yeah. good girls got lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I they noticed a lot, a lot. Really too. good. Yeah. Like the the park and street is like I'm like oh my, you yeah. can do everything. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. And then the vert, not to mention how good they are, how many they are. Like, I love it. And they're all upbeat. We're all having fun. Everyone yep. likes people. Skateboarding's way more friendly now. I don't know 100%. if that was because I was a part of the bad part, but it just seems like everyone's like, cool, what it's do you do? It's taboo now. It's just everyone's style or everybody's choice of whatever you do is appreciated. And I think in the like 80s and 90s, if you didn't do it a certain way, you're going to lose friends. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah, like I couldn't take people serious if they did certain tricks a certain way. I couldn't even really look yeah, at them get, in the I eye. Mean, you'd, get, you'd basically get, get canceled for doing oh, tricks. Oh, no anyways. shit. Yeah. Like yeah, what, was, what's an example of that? Okay. Uh, oh, no. I'm trying to think. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm not saying names. Uh, it, sometime, there was a person that, a uh, young up-and-comer, and he started going really big, but really powerful airs and stuff. But when you do a front side air... That's when you know, you're turning this way. Your back leg, your knee is tucked under your forearm. And if it's not tucked underneath your forearm, then you're taking a shit in the air. You've got both legs scrunched up and both knees pointing out like that. It's, it, it's like grabbing around your leg or grabbing between your legs. And you yeah, grab between 100%. your legs, it's stink bug. Now, that's a sensational maneuver and good for that guy. He's ripping. But then I was like, get the fuck out of here. Gotcha. What the fuck did... You're that good and you can't just put your fucking knee in? Like, what is that? Stop doing shits on my face. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Makes sense. <laughs> I was so offended. I got you. Um, yeah. So I don't know if, if he was canceled altogether just for his stink bug front sitters. But nobody, no, I'm saying in my mind, in his I mind. canceled yeah. people. And I, had yeah. and I had a group of people that also agreed. Um, once again, no names, but I know that there were certain tricks done in front of a certain group of people where I didn't have to say anything. He did that, and I'd look over at my yep. friend, and he'd be like, yep, fuck, fuck that guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I understand, man. Everybody has their things, but you're saying now it's a lot more friendly. I 100% th agree. I see nothing but super positive yep. shit. I love to follow. I watch all this. I stuff love online. it, man. I don't think I've loved it more. It's really weird to say. That's like a, I think about it awesome. all the time, but when I think about it, it's never in an aggressive manner anymore. Somebody sent me a photo yesterday. Greg Z sent me a photo of myself and Tom Boyle on the top of a vert ramp in a demo. And my face, I'm so pissed. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, that's just your look. That's a look when you were really trying to skate hard. You were like, you know, like, uh, what? 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 Who's, who are you angry with? Who did it? You know what I mean? Like, I definitely had a bone to pick with somebody and I couldn't put my name on it, my finger on it. So instead, I just stayed angry. But yeah, it's great to be here. Therapy and all that stuff. I fixed myself. So I, I'm happy. Yeah, sometimes I'm happy for absolutely no reason. That's amazing. Yeah. That's what everybody fucking shoots for. I don't, it's not, it's a rare, rare situation, I feel. Yeah, and then Most to be in stars. this when you're happy with just being doing nothing and then now you're on a show with Tony Hawk and you're skating again and not to mention all our friends that, that all those guys are down there like I've been I'm friends with these dudes for 30 years and we're on the ramp and we're all old and we've got kids and we're like sore and more tired and we're all I'm like me too man I'm yeah. fucking oh. he's like oh man I'm like yeah that's what we're we're like warlords out there it's funny it's funny now especially when you are skating with some friends and you sense that they're winding down yeah, and there's a sense of relief, Thank and God. not dude. and not like not like, oh man, you're all done. Yeah, it's more oh, like, yeah. oh dude, yeah, good. Yeah, well, you're, wait, you're done. Yeah, oh, yeah, I could be, I could be done. Yeah, I can, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could usually call it if somebody else calls it. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I'm just gonna walk down the stairs, not drop in. We're, we're done. <laughs> <I've> done. <laughs>
Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for watching this episode, and we just want to talk about one of our sponsors. This is ExpressVPN. Before we start, go to expressvpn.com forward slash YOLA. When you use our discount code on their website, that code right there will get you three months for free. And if you're tech savvy, you already know ExpressVPN is the number one rated VPN site. Example, when I log onto the internet, my internet service provider can see every single thing I did online. But when ExpressVPN is enabled on your computer, it doesn't let them see any of that. It's essentially like going to the bathroom and closing the door. You don't want anybody else to see what's going on. So ExpressVPN gives you the opportunity to have a secure encrypted tunnel straight to the internet. And yes, you're on the internet, but your service provider can't see every single thing you're doing and just take advantage of what you look at and sell it to ad companies and then they target you. Phones, routers, laptops, anybody that is connected to your Wi-Fi in your house has the ExpressVPN protection. So once again, go to expressvpn.com forward slash YOLA, and that's going to give you three months for free. It's easy turning on a light switch and know that you're protected. As always, from Marty and I, thank you so much for supporting the brands that support us. Back to the episode. You guys do this so, e I mean, that, you have to pay me fucking half a million dollars to drop in on a fucking vert ramp. Yeah, because it's not going to work out for you. It's not that's like saying, you know, I mean, uh, someone should pay me a half a million dollars to show to block a car because that's what's going to happen to you. 100%. It's different. If I, I don't get paid half a million dollars, because when I drop in, I just go, wee. <coughs> Literally. Uh, that shit sounds so... One you day. can do it. We uh, can teach you. Do you know that Tony and I are some of the greatest skateboard teachers in the world? I, uh, actually Bobby got, Lee. We taught to Bobby Lee how to skate in to 15 ollie. minutes. How to Shut ollie. the fuck yeah, up. We're the best. I'm not yeah. joking. Um, uh, we helped a blind guy do a, a frontside ollie disaster on the quarter pipe. I mean, he was basically responsible for that, but still it counts. Uh, Ryan Sickler turned you into him to a skateboarder. In, yep, in about 15 minutes. Uh, we helped Michael Tully, my co-host. We had Kevin Kraft skateboarding. Who else have we got up there? Uh, I don't remember on the show. I feel like we were that's always- That's just so far, that's yeah. what we've done on the show. But it's different if you go there with just Tony. I would not advise that. Because if you look at his resume of people that he's had there- to drop in, it's not good. Oh, you mean that they failed? Yes, he's got. I've got. He got. Wait, well, you said we were teaching people how to skate, not just drop in. <laughs> and in my defense, yeah, those people came saying I am going to drop in, and I usually discourage them once I saw them so try it on a smaller ramp. You did try to discourage. The, okay, so the dudes mm -hmm. from the slow mo guys. Yeah, I was. You got to get like, the footage. To I'm not. That's. I don't think you're ready for that. And you said he, that. Yeah, but he knew that it was probably going to be a slam and that it was going to be was good it. footage. Yeah. Right. Uh, big boy? Yes, big boy. Once again, you guys want to watch that. You want to watch it. It's a 350-pound man oh, hell jumping no. off the top of Tony's ramp into a shoulder block onto the flat. Yeah, he, that, he made the loudest noise that's ever happened on my ramp. Yeah. Um, and then the strangest noise out of his mouth. You know, he's going, <laughs> but it wasn't even... <laughs> Like someone that got the the air the wind down got of him, but in Worse. this really primal, like scary way. I thought he was knocked. I thought he was KO'd. Oh, okay. The way he was doing it, so it was scary. Yeah. But but he was okay. Um, but I could tell that when he wanted to do it, he he dropped into the smaller ramp first. We have a five and a seven foot behind our ramp. Not a lot of uh, step progression beyond that. Like it goes from seven, and then you're up on the big one, thirteen and a half. Yeah. And he was dropping on that. I could tell he was kind of going in straight leg. And I kept saying, oh, you got to really bend your front leg until the board hits the wall, then extend on the way out. And he's like, so just commit? <laughs> oh, shit. And I was that's like, that's not, a, that's not at all what I said. <laughs> he's like, all right, Tony. And then he won up the stairs. He's like, just commit, right? I'm like, no, no, big shit. And then I was still talking and he just went. He, you were get, trying to give him advice yeah, and yeah. he dropped he just, in. He was, he was just tunnel vision. It was right. like, I'm going to go up the ramp. When I get up the ramp, I'm going down. It's not a bad theory to just decide go you're it. going when you yeah. get there. Because most of the drop in is commitment. That's my hardest part. But there also is a part of like but skateboarding involved. I want to say there are, <laughs> there are dozens of examples that aren't on video, that aren't on YouTube or anything, of, of people dropping in based on my advice. So thank you very much. Okay. No, I believe that. I believe he's And I will say, I did get Tony Hawk's had a kickflip on fucking tape or DVD. Oh, trick steps. Trick. I had that. My grandma bought it for Christmas. I go, I know. Fuck, I don't know how to kickflip, grandma. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I watched that shit. I practiced on grass for like three months. Oh, man. Did you get it? A, yeah, I got it eventually. Okay. Yeah. See? Yeah, Taught him how to kickflip. Okay. You're better. In your face. In my face, indeed. 
I was like 11. I remember I got it for Christmas. Like, fucking grandma. Yeah. I remember that shit. But yeah, I did learn how to kickflip from that video. Yeah. Um, That's good because my kickflips are not that good. So I did. I don't even want to. <laughs> mine, mine, mine are trash. If we had a kickflip race right now, you might beat me. Yeah, what? pretty bad. You don't beat me. Not pretty bad. Real bad. I'm I figured you, you terrible street skater. Street, okay, because it's it's right. a it's a different technique when you're skating on vert, and well, it's I mean, even a different it's a different flying. way to flick your board. Oh, completely different. Yeah, and I just never I got hurt a lot, so I just never was able. I can't run very well, so if I have to fall off, I just have to body roll or skid, and that's like. I don't know, I've got like three of those in me in an afternoon yeah. and then I'm like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do 20 of these. I won't be able to walk the next day. Mm -hmm. So so people that skate, do you, is it like one or the other street or like vert skate or is there like people do both? Some people can walk the line. Yeah, most people. But, but more people now than ever. More than ever, yeah, because the, the skate parks are the great equalizer. There's all kinds yeah. of, the terrain is so um, diverse that they can figure out all the other ways. But, but in our generation and the generation that followed, you kind of chose ramp skating or street skating mm -hmm. yeah and that's, that's very few people could do both because it was well. such a different style too yeah. like the way you have to it's kind of like you know like a uh muay thai fighter fighting a wrestler you know like they both you don't fuck with either one of them but they're both coming gotcha. from a completely different angle they stand different they the way to put it like i'm flat-footed on vert on street you're on your toes so it's more pop all the time you got to be on your toes on vert you kind of need to be stuck to the ramp when you're on it more so to get that speed so the more flat footed you are a lot of guys that go really high have a very solid sit down stance so then when they when they ride the ramp it doesn't even look like they're working that hard and they fly around with ease but it's only a certain kind of person and usually that person lincoln ueda not a great street skateboarder but <laughs> yeah. when he's on the vert ramp yeah. holy shit dude it's like he's got an engine in there but on the flip side of that, if you take a really good street skater and put them on the vert ramp, they they pop in a way that's they're popping off, off of the of wall it. the yeah. way they would pop off the ground instead of going flat. And you need to go it. up, gotcha. right? So so a street skater goes onto the ramp and pops all the way out to the bottom. Oh, that's why you see those people kind of bail at the very beginning. Is that what I'm talking? Is that if you pull out too far, yeah, you bail straight if away. If you're popping, yeah, you're but but you always see it with, with street skaters. They like they go, they get near the vert, and then they snap their board off the wall, and they're way too far off the wall and so, land super so low. So on vert, you're just letting yourself roll. You're not popping it all the time. Pop it, but it's like more of a it's Lean. a vertical pop that that keeps your momentum going upward, not out. If you do it right, there's less energy in it. Yeah, you're just flying. Like if you do it enough, you just fly around. It's way more weightlessness, way more. A feeling of flying, really. And you're going faster, too, so yeah. it's like adrenaline, you know? How do you guys feel about the Olympics? They just awesome. inter they introduced it. That's why I was bringing yeah, it, because I watched that, and that little, that little, little girl won first place, which is awesome. I mean, she's badass, but um, this is the first time. You mean time. street? The street skating. Oh, yeah, yeah, skating. yeah. Who's that? Uh, that was Momiji, right? I'm not I sure. So. She was such a she yeah, twelve well, or thirteen, I think. Yeah, and then Racia got second or third. Okay, Racia is like the. I, I think she's the future of street skating in terms of female or in general. Like she is amazing. Huh. You might you've seen her Racia. She she got a viral clip of doing a heel flip in a in a tutu like in a fairy costume. Yep. Yep. Now she's she's like probably the most popular athlete in Brazil. Oh yeah, for real. What about uh, UFC fighters? Like, who's more? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like there's a UFC fighter or two that are Brazilian that are super. Huh? Amanda Nunes. Yeah, like Amanda Nunes is probably really. Or what's the guy with the scar? I guess uh, my, in my my mind went straight to soccer. So I was like, she's the oh, most popular gotcha. athlete. She's I'm more popular to... than soccer players. She is. Yeah, because I would say that soccer stars would rival MMA stars in right. Brazil for sure. Right. So yeah, wow. Damn, how, she's she's like thirteen, correct? Uh, I think she's closer to fifteen or sixteen now. 15. And she got she she got, she got tall right before the Olympics, well, t way taller than she was. Um, but she's yeah, she's amazing. It sounds like you. Yeah, a little. I mean, she, except you're a dude, you know. She well, I mean, you mean when I got tall? Yeah, well, you were really good and you were real little. Yeah, and then you got real tall and then yeah. you got real good. Yeah, yeah, because now the big rails are not as intimidating to her. Right, she can get on everything, and she doesn't get broke off when she. When she bails out. 
Rocky, she had such little legs. Yeah, she did. It was rough. <laughs> so crazy. Because that's, you know, in, in, in the Olympics too, there was, there was a big obstacle with one big rail or solid the, size rail. And, side, and right? the, the people who weren't as tall were risking everything. Yeah. You know, they weren't going to, they're, they're not going to straddle it. They're going to get destroyed. Right. So it was a, it was a big deal when those, they'd hit the rail. I think they got extra points for it too. Fair for enough. being smaller. Yeah. I, th I mean, I, for hitting the big rail, it's small. I don't, I don't know. If you're no, approaching it, and when you're approaching it, your head's lower than the rail before you pop up, it's pretty gnarly. Like, yeah, I got you on that one. Yeah, you know, like if I'm yeah. trying to ollie onto a ledge, and right when I crouch down, it's like you know here. I'm yeah. like, I'm not getting up that. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a no. Yeah. So, um, you said for 20 years almost you didn't skate at all. Um, did, were a couple you not, times. Yeah, you're not skating, like not even getting on a board. At home or nothing? It was just a completely... I skated the Venice Park a couple times, but I never put pads on and skated like... Because to me, it's just skateboarding, skating a vert ramp. I like all the other things, but if I'm going to be serious, the one that is the real thing is a vert ramp to me. So I didn't pad up for maybe another seven years or something. I just took... You know, I, I skated one time, which doesn't count to me because yeah, I didn't do it... With any fun, I was just like, you got to make that. You said you were going to make it, you're going to make it. I made it, and it was so frustrating and so difficult. I was like, fuck, I knew I hated skateboarding. Like, that was the worst. <laughs> Note to self, don't try that again, because that was, you know, I was trying to do something for the people again. And now, yeah. it's just time. I feel like I had a bitterness towards not being as good anymore, and I just couldn't face it. So I was sort of negative to it, or I would just try to block it out, because it was too painful to realize that I'm not in it anymore because it's my life. It's what I am. Yeah. But I'm living in Hollywood trying to be a radio guy. Like, so I was just... Weren't you getting into, uh, like, jujitsu and shit, too? Yeah, well, that was the thing to fill the void. That's what I was wondering, like... There's no vert ramps in L.A., so I started training mixed martial arts, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I started fighting because I so badly wanted to be back in the... Because when I started skating again, that's the other thing I realized. It's fucking so dangerous. Dude, it's so fucking gnarly. You're flying. Like, it's different to me now. You can totally break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that happening to a guy. Yeah. Once or twice. Just, I didn't think, I feel like maybe because I'm older, I just sense it more now where I'm like, man, we're fucking crazy. Do you know that? We're crazy because we're flying around. I'm old as fuck. I think if I hit the ground, I still bounce up. Oh. But it's just way less of a percentage of confidence when, I, when I'm approaching the ground at a high speed. I'm like, is this it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but so far, it's really, a, that's the thing. It's been baby steps and Tony's been helping me. But, you know, we've skated a bunch of stuff where I've taken some oh, heavy man. hits, he, man. He skated, we skated backyard pool up here <laughs> a few months ago. Um, it's a pretty famous pink motel pool. Oh, okay, in Burbank, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. We, we got we got the gold ticket to go ride there for a so day, cool. and I, I told Jason, "Yeah, I want to go check it out." And then he came in hot <laughs> and Amazing. tried to do a grind and went way over the coping and just did a backflip in. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I landed on my fingers and it like broke my I did something to my knuckles where they're like permanently fucked. <laughs> something yeah, happened there. It was the worst shoulder. slam I've seen at the Pink Motel pool. Yeah, and I'd only just been, I'd probably been skating for about six months. So, and that was the first bowl. Like, I've been skating Tony's and I'm still like, yeah, not that confident. And I'm like, I'll just take it easy at the Pink Motel. And then yeah. I think I made one grind and I was like, oh, it's fucking on. It's <laughs> fucking, let's rip into one. And then, whoa, I'm like, why are you upside down? The pain tolerance for you guys is up there. Yeah. I, I just, just, you said, I broke my knuckles. I'm like, I would fucking be done. I'd be a per another profession breaking my hand like that. Breaking my leg like that. It's practice. The more you do it, the less it hurts. I mean, he fights too, though, so it's like... All right, that's, that's true. You just know what's going to happen. You've, you've been there before. To me, it's more of a... It pisses me off. Because I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck. I'm going to get a fucking hospital. I'm going to get yeah, fucking that, rehab. That, that's fucking exactly how I feel. Really? Yeah. It's not the pain. It's more of like no, all it's, the it's bullshit. Just, yeah, it's just a hassle. Yeah, it, the pain is nowhere near as bad <laughs> as how long it takes yeah. to heal it. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the, my first thought when I... I knew I broke my leg right when it happened. And my first thought wasn't like, holy shit, oh my God. It was just like, fuck, are you serious? Like, I got to cancel this. It's going to be uh, months. Yeah. And then someone tried to move me. And I was like, ah! <laughs> 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 then the pain set in. Yeah. What's the worst injury you guys have had? That was it. Yeah, that was, one? Yeah. I oh. was there, man. That was, it was gross. It was gross Ugh. as fuck. 
I don't want to talk about it. Um, I broke my pelvis too, but that wasn't as visual or. Do you think being knocked out helped? Uh, probably with the pain, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I broke my like pelvis and got a KO at the same time. When did you do that? Uh, 2004, I think, 2003. Oh. In a um, monkey suit. That was the ramp, right? Yeah, that was, for, that was for Wild Boys, yep. No oh. helmet. Fuck Yeah, no. that was bad. Um, but this one, yeah, this one for sure. I mean, I, I came back from the broken pelvis in two months. Wow, just... I mean, sitting with pelvis, fuck? you can't go to. You can't do. You can't go to. The uh, for the first few weeks, can't do anything. If Wait. you're gonna sneeze, you do everything you can to not sneeze. It's the the sneeze is the most painful thing. That Could you do a poopy? Uh, or did they give you. It a was bag? more getting to the bathroom was the hard part. Walking. Well, there's, you you're on crutches basically. Uh, so but, this is where the hassle comes in. I get it now. Yeah. That's it's not me. one yeah. day. It's the like pain a lot is of days. temporary. Yeah, and the hassle's four months. Yeah, but but then on the other side of that, like last year, um, I dislocated my fingers. These two, and I kind of knew what I did, but I and and so I just went to the hospital and just said I think I dislocated my fingers. Took an X ray, doctor grabbed them, put them back in. Later, leave. <laughs> yeah, your hands fine. Moves all good. No pain. Um. Yeah, my knuckles are fat though. From can't, breaking them, can't go all the way. What's that? From, from breaking them? No, just because it, uh, it took so long for me to get to the hospital and for him to put it in place oh, that it just kind of built up all the calcium, yeah. or I don't know. What the, yeah. Oh God! Right. But I but but you know you don't like you you turn you you learn to adapt to what your kind of new normal is after you get hurt, <laughs> I know. right? Yeah, you're not and supposed you, to. You're but not yeah. supposed to, but you compensate for it, and then that's just that's just you. So like I know I did that to my fingers and I know that like I can't make a fist the way I used to, but I can function and do what I need to do, so it's fine. That's why you guys are good friends like this. You relate to this. Oh yeah, that that pain, that broken hand. I think that's why you guys' show. You know what I mean? Like that's why you like doing the solo episode so much. You have someone to relate to all this crazy shit you do. Yeah, most of our guests though are kind of of the same ilk. Yeah. And so they get that, but but it is fun for us to just do our own thing and catch up. And because when when you're doing guests, you you start to lose what's been happening in your life. Hundred yeah. percent. We call them solos. And yeah. yeah. We do one uh, one a month, yeah. and it's my it's catch the up most episodes. fun. It's catch up episodes. Yeah. That's that's when we get demonetized and fucked with YouTube because I'm saying some stupid shit. <laughs> but that's the guest episodes. It's more of like. I have a guest, uh, I have company. And when you're not, it's like, oh, FaceTime, you know what the fuck I did today? That's me and him for three hours. We're talking shit. And that's when we take mushrooms and get fucked up. And you take <laughs> mushrooms on the show? We have a few times. It's, it's, uh, he had to do the ad reads. I couldn't fucking function. Anymore. I hope yeah, can you talk? Like, are you a talkative uh, guy when you're tripping? Oh, for sure. I oh, just, okay. I just have to, like, <laughs> I don't um, have that much to say when I do that. I yeah, but when you guys, sure. but when you guys do play them back for yourselves, yeah. we watch every on Monday on YouTube, we premiere and we're in the live chat for the episode. So we watch with the fans every week. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, get ready. I kind of, I don't see it until yeah. it drops. I go, that's what I said? Oh, my fucking God. Wait, you don't remember what you said? Well, I mean, on mushrooms. I'm How many not. mushrooms do you take? I don't remember. A lot. I've just been taking uh, caps. How so old are you? 32. I, mean, I guess it's... I'm good. I've taken a lot of drugs in my life. I can't life. take a lot of mushrooms. I got mushrooms. I, I microdose and stuff. But every now and then I got... I just tried it, microdosing. It's okay. I usually take seven grams. That's my thing. I don't thing. like getting intense anymore. I love it. If I'm a little bit giggly, I'm like, cool, that's cool. But I don't be like, like oh, to go into the fucking <laughs> secret room. And I'm like, no. That's exactly I'm what too I'm old doing. to go to the secret room. I don't even want to know what the secret is. Just let me go back to the couch, you fucking asshole. I hate it. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to get all deep. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I hate that. That's how they go. Man, one time, I it was before weed was legal. I had a weed muffin in my bag, and I was getting on the plane. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'll just eat the muffin. And I ate the muffin, and I guess it was a really strong one. Because when the plane <laughs> took off, I could have sworn the plane started to, like, tip and go upside down. Oh. And I'm like, oh, fuck, it's going upside down. And I'm like, and I look at everyone else, and no one's acting like the plane's upside down. I'm like, <laughs> I feel like it is, but I guess it's not. <laughs> Third party perspective always helps. Did you say it out loud? <laughs> no, no, no. I played it cool, but my face, I just, if anybody was looking at me, they knew that I thought the plan was upside down for sure. <laughs> that guy's on drugs. He yeah. can always tell. 
Yeah, I kind of like just started to close one eye. You know what I mean? Just like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. What am I going to do? Yeah, panicked. Yeah, edibles. I've only had one time where I blacked out. You black edibles. out on edibles? What's your I date like, th- like three, four thousand milligrams. That was a lot. So it was like... Mm, four thousand milligrams? Yeah, but I blacked out on that Why one. Why would you do that? That's what I do, man. R&D. Four thousand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. R&D. Exactly. R&D yeah. for our company. Mike. Yeah, exactly. How much can I fucking do? <laughs> it's, it's, so, he, so he can write it off. Exactly. No tax lie, for tax purposes. I do. I'm I go sure. to the weed store and I keep my receipts. Oh, yeah. My CPA go, what is this? It's weed. Like, all right, it's good. You're, that's what yeah. you do. We're like, fuck yeah. 14 year old me. I got very, when in the 80s when I was making money and there were no taxes taken out of anything. So it was all 1099 income. And I had to get super creative with my expenses. So if I got a haircut, yeah, it was you, like, it to be your image. Your yeah. Haircut. You know, got to get the flop going, the squeeze, and then, um, <laughs> And then CDs, every, they go, what do you mean? Music, I skate to music. And I, and I told the tax man that I do choreography to the music. <coughs> like, okay, yeah. And but then, it's true. Sure, but I mean, anything, you know, a, a camera. Yeah, I need to document the tricks and new try to shirt. figure them out. Yeah. I wanted a new yeah. picture for, you know, oh, yeah. promotion. So hold on, because I don't know, like, could you give me just a quick rundown on, you're just, you're a young kid, you're, abnormally good at skateboarding and then you're the most famous skater wasn't ab- you weren't abnormally good that's the thing i've learned from hanging out with him lately <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't he's was just normal and he put in the work so that people miss that you know you think sorry tony to answer a bit of your question but he's i thought that i've always thought you were just like he got on a skateboard and you just fucking flew around like it was magic and i was like son of a bitch must be a crazy but the more i know about his childhood it sounds like he just went there and obsessed over it and put in the work, right? Yeah, I think, well, well definitely in the beginning, yeah. there, no one would label me as a natural. I was just super skinny and couldn't get any speed and looked all lanky, like my arms were just flailing. And then uh, as I started to figure it out, I started to create these little tricks, but most of them were under the coping, because we skated pools. So most of the tricks I did were under the coping, but then I eventually figured out how to, launch myself even though I was small and that was the breaking point because once I started doing all these weird little tricks that I could do under the coping above the coping people are like what is all that right and then that's that's when I got that's when I started doing better in competition and then as I got taller then I started going way higher and doing the the what at the time were the hardest tricks and that's when I started doing really well in competition so mostly with like I would say from age 10 to 12 was pretty painful. 12 to 14, like I was starting to come into my own. And then sometime around the age of 16 is when I really like hit my stride. Were you always really ambitious? Like, did you want to be great or was it just I, like- I, Skating was so small. I wasn't that I was aspiring to do something I've, that I had seen before. So it wasn't like there was anyone that was rich or famous from skating. Yeah, that's true. And so the idea that if you're a good skater, well, you can, you can be a pro skater until you turn 18 and then you got to find a job. Oh. So I was just going hard, doing the best that I could because I loved it so much, thinking all the time when I graduate high school, I got to figure out what college I'm going to go to or what job I'm going to oh, get. Shit. And, that, and oh. I won't, not that I was going to quit skating, but it was just, I knew I would eat into that time. And I got lucky that around the time I turned 16 is when things started to turn around financially and all of a sudden at age 17 i was making 100 grand a year oh shit and bought a house while i was still in high school i read that that's crazy so were you traveling for these competitions or were yeah they were just- mostly in the u.s but, but there were some international events okay. a lot in europe if you went to an event was gonna- there'd probably be a, f- a few thousand people there yeah it's not a- but not a stadium not no we're not an arena yeah, like now. It was weird to me because he was always, the, everyone over there was the best and gigantic and the most famous person that I could ever imagine meeting. But the world had did not know that, you know? Like this was my little world where people <laughs> yeah. were like, Tony Hawk, who's Tony Hawk? And I'd be like, what the fuck? How do you not that, know who well, Tony Hawk is? That's the other thing is, is when you say, you know, were you big? It, it wasn't on TV or anything. Not yet, yeah. no. Right? So it was all just this underground movement. It was like, it was full counterculture and... 
there were these videos, like the Bones Brigade videos and other videos that people would pass around. Yeah. But, it never, you know, it was barely in movies, it was barely on TV. And so, to us, it felt like the biggest thing in the world. But in the grand scheme of success and sports, success and celebrity, and it wasn't anything. Yeah, not on the radar. Yeah. Not even close yet. No. But it was huge for us. I mean, pfft. it kind of made it cooler in a way because nobody knew, no one even knew. <laughs> well, my mom yeah. brought me up in that shit. So she was always really heavily. She showed me my first skate tape, like the first one I ever saw. And she gave me all what the thrashers and shit. I don't fucking know. The guys were eating shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I remember. They were like kids. They were kids. And I saw like this kid's like fucking 15. I'm seven. I could do this and that's when I was like I need a board and I remember I put my first one together I was so fucking excited I think the, the cool thing about our nowadays is that uh, kids can choose to skate as readily as they choose baseball or basketball or soccer yep. or football um, but they also choose to do it in addition to other things and I think that is sort of the, the tipping point for skating in terms of being here to stay because when we started skating that was it. If you chose skating, that's all you could do because yeah. you were instantly labeled an outcast. You were not going to be able to. You were not going to be able to hang out with your mainstream friends or yeah. whatever, or, or do their sports. And you were marked, and we loved it. Like it was fine that we were set apart. We found our community there, and we found we found our sense of purpose. But nowadays, it's much more available to do it casually. Yeah, because there's skate parks everywhere. Yeah, because we for us, like you had to be on a mission to yeah. go find a ramp. Sure. Yeah. Drive hours to go skate somewhere, or get and it'd be a out. couple of people. Yeah, a couple you know? people, right? And now it's like every you go to any skate park right now is packed. Yeah, right now. Right. Right. Yeah, you just made me realize how many weird people I've met at like random little concrete oh, piles shit. of shit in the woods, <laughs> loading docks. Just some fucking dirty, stinky dude there with dreads, like mate, fucking. Yeah, enjoy. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who is this guy? And he's got like a couple of tricks that I've never seen anyone do before. They suck, but it's just like, I don't even, I've never even seen anyone else skate. This is how I do it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. what? There's, there's all kinds of fucking jungle creatures out there. <laughs> it's awesome watching it, watching people that are not influenced by anybody. But I've, it's, that's pretty rare these days when it's a skate spot now. Everyone's, everyone's there, you know, and the parks are so good. Like oh. things that are available now Here off the side of freeways, too. they just didn't have that, you know. Right there on ne Nickel Park, that one right off the freeway, that hidden little gym. I don't know if you've seen it's right behind Echo Park. It's just a bowl, a ramp, a staircase, and it's enclosed right off the freeway, like with a gate over it. I see like kids oh, break in there all um, the fucking time. What's that? I know what that is. It's pretty cool. I forgot the name of it. It, it, it was just it's a private park? shot stuff there. I don't know. You got it. Yeah, you well, you have to you have to pay or sign up. Yeah, you have to wear pads. Oh, you have to wear pads there, right? I'm not sure. It was full of trash when I moved here, and then a couple years ago, I'm driving on the freeway. I go, get the fuck out of here! Oh, maybe kid maybe it's not the same one I'm thinking of. I'm not sure. It's right next to it, like right across the street from Mango Park. Yeah. Vertigo, Vertigo Park. That's not it. I'm not sure. I when I first came to America, the first thing I ever skated was a um, a mini ramp that had uh, hips and a spine. And to me, I didn't want to leave. Like, I could have stayed and skated 24 hours. Like, I think I could have stayed awake all night. Because I, I was like, no wait, you can put a... You can, I didn't know you could do it, let alone see it. And it was just this... And, and then to know now, like, my, me coming here now and going, yeah, look at this concrete... I'd be like... I think my fucking eyes would fall out. Like I don't like to, to, there's like vert bowl, this bowl, pool, skate park, corner ledge, like just everything and some stuff that I'm like, oh, I didn't even. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's oh, cool. You don't like this park? There's one across the street. Yeah, that too. You go to that one. What's these pump hump places? Do you see those? Oh yeah, Whoa. pump tracks. Yeah, pump tracks. I'm like, man, what's that? Just a, it's concrete the one that with goes bumps like in it and turns, oh, and you just like motocross when they do that. Thing in the races, yeah. But like instead this. of skimming it on a skateboard, you got to pump each one of them to keep your momentum. Gotcha. So it looks like you just you can pump it right all the way around. You don't push. Yeah, that's but, the intent. But, it, it, but coming from I've, I've skated a few of them, and com, coming from a vert skater's perspective, perspective, you pump so hard through them that you get way too much speed for the turns. You end up running off the course. Oh, so you have to keep it in check. Oh, <laughs> just, okay. So you've been warned. Okay. When you go to one, watch out because you're going to fly off the course. All right, I look forward to it. One of my questions, because you were saying now you can go to any park any, ever. 
when I was a kid, like I said, my mom's like, Thrasher, here you go. And then I'm watching X Games. I'm watching all you guys fucking fly around and Bob Baron Quest and all these guys. Then the fucking game comes out, PlayStation 1, and that changed everything, I think, for the younger generation. It wasn't, because everybody loved video games, and now there's a skateboard video game. So when fucking Pro, Pro Skater came out, that I was telling Marty when we, when we booked you guys, I'm like, wow, what a pivotal piece in my fucking childhood playing that shit over and over and over and over because it was you know playstation one's the new shit it was n64 or you know what i mean Dreamcast. it was Dreamcast or sega so then tony hawk pro skater comes out and i'm you can pick different dude i watch these guys in the fucking x games like when that came out that was right after that 900 correct it was really uh, yeah, close yeah same year same yeah. year so yeah, mm. it was really because i remember i'm sitting there watching it like oh, what the fuck is going on there's two kids in my school that skated that was it. I'm living in a Mexican town. Like, there's one Mexican kid and one white kid that skates, and we're friends now because you skate too. <laughs> so when that came out, I think you're saying oh, you can't even be around anybody. If you can be a skater, you can't play a baseball player anymore. You can't play a football. You're the skater kid. Now, I mean, that I feel because I played football, I played soccer, and I skated. I feel like that game kind of opened up a lot of the you don't have to be a fucking pothead or you're selling drugs at the skate park kind of thing. I feel like the game kind of helped out a little. Um, Definitely. No, thank you. I think I think that what it did was bring a, an audience that was curious about skating, but didn't want to participate, didn't know anything about it, and brought them into the world and helped them appreciate it. And it actually kind of it kind of created a spectator sport from from that. So, so that those people that that played the game that really enjoyed it they would sit and watch X Games and, and know the tricks yeah, they're and be inspired now. by it. And, 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 and a lot of kids end up trying, actually starting skating because of the game. 100%. Like, I, I hear that a lot. And that was not something I ever anticipated. Like when I, set, when I set out to do the game, I just wanted skaters to buy PlayStations to play it because I knew that they would be stoked on it. Yeah. To me, that was the big success. would be like, oh, skaters are going to be hyped on this thing. And then it blew up in the gaming world and then suddenly kids were like, I want to, I want to skateboard. I want to learn how to skateboard. I want to do the 360 flip to crooked grind because they can yeah. do it in the game. And it gave uh, other pro skateboarders more respect in the game. Cause I've always, when people ask me what I do and I say it, depending on the year, there's, you know, people go, wait, you can get paid for that. And then after Tony's video game came out, you would, you would say you're a pro skateboarder and they go, oh, wow, do you know Tony Hawk? And they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's no longer, I can see the, the look on their face, it's no longer, this dude's lying <laughs> and he sells weed. <laughs> it's more, yeah, of course you are because I'm well aware of skateboarders uh, doing that for a living, you know? So it kind of put us on the map as it could be a career, stop shitting on me. That's what I felt like. Be anyway. a career, stop shitting on me. Oh, oh I wish I would have said that. that. I fucking love that. What do you do? I, I fucking get high and go out and film it. <laughs> you could get paid for that? Yeah, fuck you. I love that. Thank you. Um, one question I've always had, real quick, before we get out of here. I've all, every playing the game, how do you pick who's in the game? Um, do you go like, hey, this is my friend. That's, that guy's good. That guy's good. I have always wondered. Because NFL, you know who the fuck's going to be in the game. The new Tony Hawk. Yeah. Like, Holy shit. Uh, well, for the first game, I, just, I wanted uh, an eclectic mix, like skaters that represented all styles of skating, so not just street, not just vert, well-rounded, and characters, like Chad Muska. I mean, he was, you know, he was an amazing street skater, but he also he was such a personality, and we knew that that would add something special to the game. Um, so, yeah, and, and you know, I was trying to be as, as inclusive as I could, too, considering the, the, the population of skaters at the time. Um, and so I, the amazing thing about, I mean, I do, I, I, I guess to give myself props, almost everyone in that first game is still actively skating and still considered relevant. That's true. You know, and I'm really proud of that fact that, that we picked the right skaters to represent skateboarding in video games. Um, and then going forward, it was more, it started to get crazy because we started to have to fend people off. Oh, I can only imagine. You know, once we got to like the third and fourth game, it was like everyone wanted to be in it and you'd just be like, okay, how do we navigate hey, they're this? They're all asking. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was an honor. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, I was a hidden character in one. Yeah? Yeah. 
American Wasteland. Which one was that? Third one? Uh, no, Wait. it was, um, it went Underground, Underground 2, <coughs> and then this American crazy Wasteland. crazy to hear. I was thinking about doing, flying through the fucking secret glass door in the first one. Or, oh, man. I played that game every fucking day. And Grand Theft Auto. So you guys are green suited. The whole, like we had Franklin from GTA, and he was telling us kind of the whole process of how they film, how they like film the video games, um, and stuff like that. I, so I did mocap. I did, I did motion capture for the first game, and it was such an ordeal then because it's like it's 1998 or 99. So the technology wasn't really there, and they set up all these cameras. Remember Skate Street? They set up all these cameras at Skate Street. And oh, yeah, so um, with the balls on these, side. yeah, and then I got to put the suit on with the balls. And, and, and I'm telling you all this because my board hit one of the cameras and they had to reset the whole thing, it took like four hours. Ugh. Um, and then when we they got the, the footage, they couldn't really use it, they couldn't use it for the game the way they had programmed the game already. What, like it just didn't, it, it, didn't, it didn't translate to the way that, that their engine was, so they ended up really just animating everything from video. That's oh, kind of no the dirty shit. little secret. So my motion capture was used a lot for promotion. <laughs> uh, you know, so a lot of people like every, yeah. people, you guys saw that I did that yeah. and they thought it was cool, but we didn't it use any cool. of that data. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> that just really popped my bubble, Tony. <laughs> I was thinking about like, what's but the, the point is going that, on? But, but so it, and, and the, I guess the best example of that is when, when I did 900, at the X Games, that was in June. The, the game was already being submitted to console manufacturers. So it was it was. Oh, you're already working done. on it. It was done. Oh, shit. And then I hit up the, I hit up Neversoft literally the day after. And I said, you guys, I, I did this trick last night. And I think you're going to want to have it in the game, considering that people are going to probably expect it now. Um, yeah. And uh, I got an email back from the head of, of Neversoft. And he's like, we're way, ahead of you. we're way ahead of you, you fucking rule. <laughs> yeah. And so they animated that from video. From Into video the from the X Games. Like they just oh, took so the X Games. when you do it, it's just the same shit. Yeah. In the game. Wow. Well, they, they didn't, you know, they, they, they used the body language and everything. Right. But they, they didn't, it's not like it digitized the video. Of course. But, um, but they did, a, I mean, to, for them to get that into a game that was going to be released in September is unheard of. Especially around then. So uh, I was lucky that I was... Paired up with Neversoft and Activision. I mean, changed my life. It's mine too. Shit. <laughs> Do you play video games? Um, oh, I mean, in the 80s, I was. Uh, when, when we were doing all the THPS stuff, I was only playing that because I was, as soon as we released one, we'd be on to the next one and trying to, you know, work on that. So, um, I didn't really get into other games uh, these days. I mean, I'll play, like, I, I, I play a lot of Mario Kart with my daughter. Nice. But now she's kind of out of it, so. <laughs> and she beats me now, so that's I fine. Well, we can, we can put that one away. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be good as a kid. I fucking suck. I played it the other day at Dave & Buster's. Mario I'm not Kart. good anymore, man. I can't throw those banana either. peels like cool. I used to. The best to. thing about Mario Kart, especially with having kids of different ages, is that the techniques are pretty much the same. So you're always the king. <laughs> when you're the dad. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Mario Kart. Like, I played Mario Kart before oh, yeah. they were born, and then as they were all born, the systems got better, but the controls are pretty much the same, and then I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's go. Okay. And then finally, Katie and I played it so much that she got better than me. All right. I used to play Supercross story. with my son. That's That ended. Supercross, which one is that? Um, it's, it was the one that had the ATV in it as well. MX ATV Unleashed, I think. Damn, dude. I don't think I played that watch. I played but it had a super cross track, and you could do whips over the triple. So Sick. it was pretty legit. It had, like, Ricky Carmichael in it and shit. I liked it. I had that, the game Too Extreme. The only other skateboard, biking, I think rollerblades were in that game. That game fell off. It's when Surge. I used, to, I used to drink Surge. This isn't pretty 1998 right now. Sorry, guys. Um, so my last question before we get out here. Do you guys think with the show, I mean, you said you integrate your, most of your promotion for the show is you guys progressing and doing your things and tricks, like you said with Jason. Do you think you'd ever do integrate live show with some type of skateboarding event? Because I could see a lot uh, of for people the podcast? showing up for that Yeah, shit. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah. We just, we're, you know, we're, we, we need the resources. 
<laughs> and the and the support team. But yeah, I'm in the fun. middle of doing live shows for my podcast. So once I test the waters and do that, then I'll probably know more about how you do podcasts at live. Uh, so I'll let him figure that out first. Yeah, he's busy. I, if I can, <laughs> that's how it works when it comes to certain things and when it comes to like making the show bigger because. Tony's got the job of him being him, and I've got the job of making podcasts because that's my job. So yeah. I, I know a little bit more, and I'm always in it. And I know that if the Jason Ellis show does a live show, everybody goes. I go, bird mate, <laughs> got a spot, you know, and you know, and, the, and he's got a ramp. So it's just like a matter of getting sponsors and all that stuff. But he uh, once I would have that all in, I'd be like, "Hey, it's we can do it," and he'd be like, "Okay, we'll do it." And then it comes down to time because he's doing a lot more shit than I am. Like he is busy all the time. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that assessment. It's crazy. He's here. <laughs> no, I, no, but also you're gonna so, eat at a restaurant or something. Is that like the, did you plan your day at least? Yeah, I know. I'm going to the. <laughs> oh, why are you yeah. going to? A, I got invited to the. I, I think I, I think I can. Yeah. I got invited to the Dior. Runway show. Oh, for Santa Monica tonight? Yeah, That's what you're Monica, doing? Yeah. Fucking so awesome. Stoked. <laughs> they even give me clothes. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> I need to love that. God. What'd you get? You get shoes? Shoes, yeah. <laughs> you already knew. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so sick. That's fucking sick. Mm. See? Back from. Did you get nope. sunglasses? Uh, I didn't see any. He's like, I just looked at all the shit up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a. One of those man purse things, but oh, not you, for my outfit. Do you, not do you want outfit. it? <laughs> I already gave it away. Oh, fuck. Come on, man. I'm your man, I'm your man purse man. Oh, oh damn. Sure. Well, you know who saw it first? Because it came to my office. Jared? No. Who? It's all right. Oh, Galena? Galena, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fair. I'll give yeah. you. Okay, fair enough. You can have it. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that the other part of that, when he he is the one, when people ask us to be on podcasts, like you guys, I just let him vet it. So it's like, is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. All right, let's go. You're welcome. So here you go. <laughs> you, you were vetted. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> Shit. You're out there doing stand-up comedy too, right? Yeah, yeah. I just did the comedy store last night. Oh, it's the shit. the second time I've been at the comedy store. Yeah. How's that, man? It's fucking amazing. It's the... I can, Once again, I cannot believe how lucky i am you know like just to have a, a situation after all the things that i've been through and now i'm like i have a shot at being a comedian i don't really care about I, I got a job so it doesn't i'm not the same i'm very lucky like these people are starving and they're trying to get spots and they're trying to get you know a couple hundred bucks a thing and i'm like you don't even have to pay me dude i just want the experience i want to get good at comedy that's all i want from it if people go hey and you're really funny and they come to a show Fuck yeah, that's really cool. But my main objective is to master it in some sort of fashion. You know, where I know I can go up there for an hour and, you know, everybody's like, whoa, that's fucking hilarious. That's what I want to do. That's my mission. So it's been going pretty well. I did one on Friday at the Comedy Store. And then Tim Dillon, who I've never met, who I love, comes up to me and he goes, hey, man, you're really funny. That was amazing. I'm glad I didn't have to go up after you. And I'm like, is this fucking dude for real? And he's like... Do you want to do a show with me next week? And I was like, oh. yeah. So then that's what I was. Good I was shit. That feels fucking hilarious. Yeah. He's funny as hell. Yeah, he's a funny guy too. This guy opened up for Whitney Cummings. Oh, shit. Dude, that was my second my second gig in front of a lot of people was with Whitney Cummings. Like, I don't even know how that happened. It was in San Diego. I went. 1,900 oh, people in a theater. Oh, damn. Yeah, it was terrible. I was the most. I was, was like. It scarier walking onto the stage or it, fucking flying through the air? Oh, walking on stage by far scares the shit out of me. Not so much. I'm a little bit better now, but then, and how big that crowd was, I was, this was, I was like, whoa, pressure, like high levels of pressure. I'm giving myself right now. I was really new. I didn't even. I was trying to make sure I remembered my set because I didn't really even know it yet. So it was very scary. Stepping into a whole new profession, and that, that I get it. I get it, the nervousness. But now that you're getting it done, that's why I was asking. You're on stage. Once you guys do that, you're, I mean, you're obviously, you've been doing stuff for so long on movies and TV. This live show is going to be fucking cool. I, mm. I, I, I don't know. I'm just, right, they, that's what I'm seeing. You know see, what I'm see yeah. he knows. Yeah. Because he knows more than I do about this whole game. And if he's like, this is exciting. If you and I did that, that means we're doing it. 
A hundred percent. I right. thought you guys didn't say anything because you're like, fuck, we, we're going to announce tomorrow. I thought that I'm like, we're going oh, to blow it up. To executive fuck. produce it. <laughs> okay. No better person on earth. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, uh, that's, yeah, that's what we do. We uh, entertain. Oh, fuck you. Sorry. We'll uh, do a stunt too. We're going to do that car stunt. You drive the car and I'll jump off kay. the car. Off of it? Yeah, he's going to drive a, 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 like a side-by-side, -side, like those buggies, <laughs> off a jump. And then I'm, I'm standing on the outside of the car holding my skateboard. And then when he jumps into the air, I, in the air I jump off the car and land on the ramp next to the car and we both ride away. It's a, it's a stunt that he attempted, but the, all the elements were not quite there. Yeah, didn't work. Yeah, I hit my tailbone so hard that my fucking, my poo hurt for like two months. I feel like I broke my butthole. <laughs> Do you just it was get your visuals? It was a deep pain. It was one of those ones where you hit your ass so hard that you think you might have hurt your back. You know, oh. like for a second when I was bouncing, I was like, oh, have I? You know, I mean, I started doing that and I was like, okay, no, you haven't done that. Like, that's how hard I hit. I missed the ramp completely. Jumped out of a car and the ramp was like on a, on the wrong angle. And I was like, fuck it. We've got to try and make, see if I can get on the ramp. So as soon as I leap out of the car, I'm like, oh, because I see the ramps on this angle and I'm still going that way. And I'm like, you got to be shitting me. Like, what? Am I dead again? Oh. And then you know, I, did, I just went, my ass, well, bam. And I was like, this is it. I could barely walk for a couple of days. And I still did the stunt the next day, like 20 times I tried to do it. I kept bouncing off when I'd land because the bank ramp was really banked. It wasn't like... It's the dedication. Yeah. It's the dedication with you guys. Yeah. Once I don't I'm have fucking that. out and I'm talking about it for the rest of my life. I almost died the other day, guys. This I did it 20 times the next day. Fuck that. Yeah, but if you say you're going to do something. That's true. And he's willing to do it again. That's honestly. all. That's you. That's hold it person. Oh, it's payback. I'm yeah. definitely going to do it. And then my asshole you know, will be redeemed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all we want. <laughs> Me and my asshole that night will be like, well done. We got that guy back. Redemption. Next time they'll know better. Don't fuck with my ass. So the first Hawk, and, Hawk versus Wolf is going to be, sorry. If he's going to jump off a fuck, can you do that at the end? Do yeah. a whole show. It'd like, probably be a good idea to do it. it. It'd definitely be, be jumping a, out of the fucking. We car. shouldn't do it at the start. That's for sure. <laughs> Could you imagine? Might be a short show. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> I'd be shitting my pants all over a ramp. Yeah, skateboarding. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay over here. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Man. Um, before we get out of here, where can everybody find the show? Where can everybody like what day? What time? Uh, uh, it gets released on Mondays. Yeah, so um, Sunday midnight, most of the time. Yeah, but Hawk vs. Wolf, wherever Hawk. VS Wolf. I mean, it's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. Uh, podcast, Apple. Spotify. Got an Instagram. Same thing. Hawk Napster. Versus Wolf. What's our Instagram? Hawk vs. It's at Hawk versus Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're not really that keen on that part. We're more like trying to. We're like, is the show really good? I'm blown away that the show is really good every time. I've been doing this for 15 years. It's my life, and every we don't prep. You know, and we just turn the mic on and uh, every time I walk out of there, I assess what we did. And I'm like, I fucking am freaking out how good we are at this. Like, we're it's a really good show. I sh whatever. Oh, I don't care if I'm no, tooting my own horn. No, I feel it's not me. It's saying. him. Like, I, when I'm by myself, it's not that good. <laughs> when, 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 when we're doing there it together. There have been a couple really times when I, I, I was laughing so hard that I, I really couldn't function anymore. Oh, yeah. I was crying. Which oh, makes yeah. the job, you know yeah. the deal, dude. So when you guys fun. are laughing, it's like the best oh, dude. dip feeling ever. It's the best shit. Yeah. There'll be some time to take this off and go, what the fuck are we doing here? That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the. It's more fun when you like the motherfucker you're talking to. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. That's what I want. We avoid each other in real life. <laughs> <laughs> we just do it because I actually hate this guy. He's the worst. Wait till they turn the mic off. He's going to start kicking everybody. He's very mean. I'll be out of the door before you put your headphones off. <laughs> Shit. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, man, I thank really you. Appreciate it. Thank it you so fun. much. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, I think that was that was good. That was fun, guys. I wonder, I appreciate you guys being here, Marty. I'm just really super grateful we can make this happen. Thanks hey. for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you guys both for being here. Appreciate it. All right, we're gonna get out of here.
As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been the Dope As Usual podcast. Have a dope-ass day. Nice. That's the least amount of weed I think I've ever smoked on a smoking episode. Sorry. No, I'm saying, but I'm high. I need to switch up my weed. This is good.